Anyone who's ever had to pack for a trip has probably known the frustration of trying to cram almost a suitcase worth of stuff into a backpack. I mean, sure, we could suck it up and leave a few items behind or haul around our bulky luggage with us if they're so important. But if we did that, then our bag won't fit in the overhead compartment anyway. And all we're trying to bring is a few extra pairs of underwear just in case we eat some bad tandoori chicken. Well, that got gross, but other than that, it was pretty much a perfect analogy for why data compression became so important to reduce storage requirements and to improve transfer speeds over standard connections. These packaging services are kind of like our roommate who catches us standing on our bag trying to zip it up and says, you know, you uh, can just roll your laundry and save like a ton of space, right? And as it turns out, when we try it for ourselves, the smug little turd is right. Not only does all of our stuff now fit, but we even have more room to cram with stuff we'll never use, like that copy of E.T. the Extraterrestrial that we definitely don't watch every night and cry. Back on topic. Obviously, data can't be rolled in quite the same manner as slightly pre-worn laundry, so coding engineers devise algorithms capable of breaking down longer strings of data into shorter ones, then reassembling them later using what they've retained. An easy way to describe this would be like breaking down the equation 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 into 2 to the fifth power, which is much faster to write and simpler to articulate. But Linus, I actually uh, know a thing or two about coding, and uh, one of those things is that the uh, use of exponential symbols is simply not possible. Well, first off, thankfully we weren't roommates in college. I mean, talk about smug. Second, you're correct as well. While it is possible to write a command string which describes an exponential function, it usually isn't much of a space saver, so maybe a better way to demonstrate how a compression algorithm works is to use something like a string of X's and O's, or zeros and ones if you're catching the similarities here. Let's say we have a string of eight digits, which is spelled out as XXXOOXXX. Now, an algorithm may look at this and decide that every time it comes across a new digit, it will replicate it, and then note how many times it's been repeated. This would cause our string to transform into the smaller X302X3. While this did reduce overall size, size, it only managed to do so by 25%, which isn't exactly going to allow us to cram our drives full or transfer large files over the internet more efficiently. That's where more specifically designed algorithms will come in to strip the code to its most basic form, instead simply adding all the x's together by treating each as a value of 1, then listing all the o's followed with a digit count as before. Then we end up with a string that would look like 3023, which we can now see is half the size of the original original code. Now obviously this example is rudimentary at best, but it gives an idea of how mathematicians are able to achieve and then further improve upon this feat as time goes on. Now, this example would be known as lossless compression. All of the original data remains intact and is a requirement for programs or documents. But if you're willing to give up some detail in the original file, lossy compression algorithms can be used for media files like music and movies, as long as you understand that the tighter you cram it, the lower the playback quality you'll experience, which you can actually learn a little bit more about here in our video specifically about video compression. Speaking of compression, no, no, not compression. Okay, whatever. We've got a new sponsor today on TechWiki, FreshBooks. It's a cloud accounting service and basically the kind of thing that any freelance worker or small business is going to want to know about. It's all about making your life easier when it comes to invoicing, getting paid, and tracking expenses because it's done online. It makes invoicing simple. Your clients can pay you online. Your expenses are automatically tracked as you spend and all the little details about cash flow are all in one place so you know exactly where you stand and it shows a full history of every invoice and allows you to check if your client has viewed the invoice and all kinds of cool stuff like that. You can even update your FreshBooks timesheet from your phone and pull project hours right into an invoice so you can send that off so you get paid. If you're your own boss, you should be using stuff that makes you feel like a boss and FreshBooks is an incredibly easy way of doing all of your billing online so you'll have more time to do the work you actually want to be doing or maybe you don't want to be doing it. Maybe you just need to do it to eat or whatever the case may be to do your work. Have over to freshbooks.com slash techquickie and don't forget to enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section because that's important. 
All right, thanks guys for watching this video. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked. Check out our other channels, Linus Tech Tips and Channel Super Fun, where we do super fun stuff. Comment on the video with suggestions for future videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, slash, follow, and all that good stuff if you want to see more videos just like this one.